In this lesson, we're going to talk about the Bohr model of the atom. But first, a brief history of atomic theory. Starting with Dalton, around uh, 1800, his model of the atom was just like a sphere. It had no internal structure, no protons, no neutrons, no electrons. In fact, sometimes it's called the marble model. About 100 years later, J.J. Thomson uh, talked about a, a plum pudding model of the atom. He was responsible for discovering the electron, and so he knew that the atom had to have a positive component and a negative component. His idea was that uh, the atom was positively charged with negative electrons embedded in it. Uh, a few years later, Ernest Rutherford discovered the nucleus of the atom and that it was positively charged with the electrons outside of the nucleus in empty space. A few years after that, Bohr proposed a model where the location of the electrons was a little bit more specific. He said that the electrons were in these uh, orbits or set paths um, around the nucleus. And finally, the quantum mechanical model uh, talks about the uh, electrons being located within these different regions of probability within the atom. We will discuss this model further later. I hope that you can appreciate the progression of our atomic model here. We started with something that had uh, no internal structure, this marble model here. And slowly but surely we discovered uh, the different subatomic particles of the atom. Once we knew about the nucleus, then our focus turned to the location of the electron. And that's where we're going to start here with the Bohr model of the atom. Bohr wanted to know about the location of electrons within atoms. So he studied hydrogen, which has only one electron per atom. And he looked at the atomic emission spectrum for hydrogen, shown below. An atomic emission spectrum is generated um, for an element, and it contains only certain wavelengths of light. And uh, Bohr wanted to make a connection between these wavelengths and electron location. An atomic emission spectrum is not a continuous spectrum. It doesn't contain all wavelengths um, like a continuous spectrum for visible light does, shown here. And so once again, Bohr wanted to figure out what these different wavelengths of light had to do with electrons and their locations within hydrogen atoms. Bohr proposed that um, the energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom is quantized. This was uh, Max Planck's work. But basically, this is where the idea for orbits came from. Um, electrons could only possess certain amounts of energy that would allow them to be in certain orbits that were set distances from the nucleus. Um, if you have ever heard of energy levels within atoms, this is the same thing. A little bit more about Planck here. Planck just talk generally about certain quantities or quanta of energy being released or absorbed by atoms and then he tied that to frequency. Uh, he has an equation, Planck's equation, E equals H nu, and it shows a direct relationship between frequency and energy. So the higher the frequency uh, of, of a wave, the higher its energy. If you're having trouble wrapping your mind around this quantization of energy, um, kind of relate it to climbing the stairs. If you want to go from this step to this step, you have to increase your height a set distance. You can't just increase your height, you know, halfway and expect to get up to the next step. You'll just drop right back down to the step that you were on. So you can increase your height by certain quantities each time and that's kind of what quantized energy is like. And you can also release energy in certain quantities only.
going back to the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, the top was our short wavelength, high frequency end of the spectrum. And uh, now with Planck's equation, the high frequency end also is the high energy end. And that's why uh, gamma rays and x-rays and even into ultraviolet radiation are so dangerous. It's the high energy waves. Down at the bottom, you have your longer wavelength and lower frequency and then therefore lower energy waves. And those tend uh, to be not quite as dangerous. Um, so what do Planck and the quantization of energy and waves have to do with the Bohr model of the atom for hydrogen? Well, Bohr had these energy levels, these different orbits within his atom. He gave them quantum numbers uh, and called them n. So in the diagram below, you can see n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. Uh, n equals 1 was the ground state for the one electron within the hydrogen atom. It is the, uh, the energy level that's the closest to the nucleus and the electron would have the lowest amount of energy. The electron could jump to an excited state, any energy level greater than one, and those would be farther away from the nucleus and the electron would have to have a greater amount of energy to get out to an excited state. Electrons within these energy levels, these set orbits, would have to possess um, a certain quantity of energy or quantum of energy and if an electron was going to change energy levels it would have to absorb or release these certain quantities of energy, quanta of energy, uh, in order to accomplish that. So Bohr made the connection between the atomic emission spectrum for hydrogen and the idea that the electron within a hydrogen atom was jumping uh, between these quantized energy levels. So he said that the electron would always be in the ground state initially and if it could absorb uh, a quantum of energy it could move to an excited state farther away from the nucleus. Uh, this quantum of energy you can also call a photon. Einstein called it a photon uh, later on. and. Uh, the electron doesn't spend a, a lot of time in the excited state. It's not very stable. Nature favors lower energy, and so it comes back down to the ground state or a lower energy level and then releases energy, and if you're lucky, that energy that's released is in the form of visible light. This quantum of energy would correspond with a certain frequency, according to Planck's equation, and then a certain wavelength and a certain color, and you would get a line on the atomic emission spectrum. In the diagram here, you can see an electron in the ground state right here. It's in the orbit that's closest to the nucleus. And the little red squiggly line is uh, a quantum of energy or a photon that's going to hit the electron and then it goes to an excited state. Uh, over here you can see it's in the second energy level or n equals 2 but it doesn't stay there. So if you go over here, you can see that electron is still in the second energy level, but it's going to release a photon or a quantum of energy, this little red squiggly line here, and um, then it goes back down to the ground state. And the energy that it's releasing, a photon or a quantum of energy, um, is a certain frequency and a certain wavelength and would correspond with a certain color um, that it would make on the atomic emission spectrum. Uh, for hydrogen, there are many electron jumps that are possible. Only some of them are visible, and um, that's what you see down here at the bottom. You have uh, a purple one, and a blue one, and a green, and then a red. And uh, that corresponds with the Balmer series up here in this diagram. This would be electrons jumping from higher le energy levels da back down to the second energy level. Um, when electrons return to the ground state, uh, you get UV radiation that's produced. Now we wouldn't be able to see that. And um, when you have electrons jumping from higher energy levels down to the third energy level, that would be infrared, which we can't see either. So only certain quantities of energy that are released by electrons uh, within atoms are visible.
Unfortunately for Bohr, this model only worked for the hydrogen atom and not other atoms. And so uh, next we'll talk about our current model of the atom, the quantum mechanical model of the atom. And some of Bohr's ideas will be tweaked so they work for all atoms.